JavaScript has this concept of object links, whereby an object can have this special link to another object. So let's say we have three objects, one we call orange, one we call red, and one we call green. The orange object has three properties, A, B, and C. The red object has two properties, A and D. And then the green object has two properties, B and E. And if the green object has a link pointing to the red object, and the red object has a link pointing to the orange object, what this means is that when you access a property, say, in the red object, if there is no property of that name in the red object, JavaScript will follow the link and look in the object that is linked to for a property of that name. So if we access the property named B in the red object, well, there is no property named B in the red object, but there is one in the orange object that red links to. So we'll get back the value of that property in the orange object. Similarly, if we get the property named C from the red object, well, the red object doesn't have any property named C itself, but the object it links to, the orange object, does. So we get the value of that property. Let's say now, though, we access properties in the green object. Let's say we access A. Well, the green object itself doesn't have any property named A, so we look up the link, and yes, there is a property A found in the linked to red object. So that's the property that we get. If we try to access the property named C in the green object, well, the green object itself doesn't have any property of that name, so JavaScript looks in the linked to red object, but that object doesn't have any property named C either, so JavaScript looks up the chain to the orange object, and yes, there is a property of that name. So when you look for the property named C in the green object, what you go back is the value of the property C in the orange object. So let's see how this plays out in code. Let's say we have an object assigned to a variable foo with three properties, one a, one b, and one c. And then we have another object assigned to a variable bar with two properties, one a and then one d. And a third object assigned to a variable ack with two properties, b and e. And we haven't actually discussed how to link objects together, but let's just alight over that and say that ack links to bar and the object in bar links to the object in foo. And so if we play with these objects a bit, like say if we start by testing whether foo.c is equal to bar.c, which is equal to act.c, we're going to get true. Because even though only the object in foo has its own property name c, the expression bar.c is going to evaluate to the same property because bar has no property of its own named c, but bar is linked to foo, and so JavaScript looks in the object foo and it finds that property c. And similarly, the expression act.c resolves to the same property because even though act itself has no property named c, we look up the link in the object of bar, which has no c, so JavaScript looks up the chain again into the object in foo, and that object does have a property named c, so act.c resolves to the same thing as foo.c. In the next line, when we assign a value to bar.c, we are actually creating a property c in that object. The key idea is that when we're assigning to a property, we're always assigning to that object. We're never looking up the chain. It's always affecting that object itself. So now that the object in bar has its own property C, if we access ack.c, we're going to get the property C of the object in bar, not foo. Because when JavaScript looks up the chain, it's going to look in the object of bar before it looks in the object of foo. When we access foo.c, however, we still get back the value 3, because foo still has its own property c, which has remained untouched. It turns out that the basic types in JavaScript, like string, numbers, and arrays, can act in some ways like objects. Strings, for instance, all have a property named length, which is the number of characters in the string. So we have a string here, for instance, which reads hello, and if we access its length property, we get the value 5, because the string hello has 5 characters. Strings also act like objects in that all strings have a link to this one particular object, and this object which they all link to has methods which are useful for dealing with strings. For instance, the property char at is a method which takes a number, an index, and returns a string consisting of just the character at that index. So here the variable foo holds the string hello, and when we write foo.char at, we are getting the property char at from the object linked to by the string. When we invoke the method here in that property, foo gets passed to this in that method, and one gets passed as just the regular parameter. 
And just like with lists and arrays, strings are indexed from zero, so one refers to the second character in the string, so this returns the string with the single character E. Here in the last line, it's the same thing going on, except the string being passed to this is a vast, and the index is three. Index three refers to the fourth character, so this call returns a string consisting of just the letter S. In case this isn't clear, let's illustrate the scenario here. We have two string objects, one reading a vast, one reading hello. Each of those objects have their own property named length, but that's the only property they have. The individual strings, though, are linked to this one object which has methods for dealing with strings, including char at, but also others which I haven't listed here. So we haven't discussed yet how to actually create these links from one object to another. To create such links involves the new operator. The new operator is a unary operator which takes as its operand a call to a function. And what happens is that first a new object is created and that object is then passed into the function as the word this. And when a function is called with new, that function always returns that new object. It doesn't return anything else. So here, for example, we have a function assigned to the variable tom, and this function takes two parameters, foo and bar, and the values of those two parameters are assigned to properties of this of the same name. So when we call tom with the arguments two and three using the new operator, first a new empty object is created, and that argument is passed as this into the function, and so two is assigned to the property foo of that object, and three is assigned to the property bar of that object. And despite the fact that this function has no return statement, because we invoked it with the new operator, it's going to return that new object anyway. So Jane here is assigned an object with a property foo with the value two, and a property bar with the value three. In the last line, it's the same deal, except David is assigned an object with the property foo having the value seven, and the property bar having the value 10. Notice that in the first use of new here, I surrounded it in parentheses, whereas the second new operation, I didn't. I just did this to illustrate that the new operator doesn't need parentheses here, because the new operator has higher precedence than the assignment operator. So you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with creating links? Well, the new operator does one more special thing. All function objects in Java have a special property called prototype, and when you create a new function, its prototype property is just an empty object. What's special about this object, though, is that when we call the function with new, that new object that gets created is linked to the object in prototype. So here, for instance, we have the same function tom, except now we're giving its prototype object a property ack with the value of the string hello. So when we call tom with new, the object that gets returned to Jane has a link to that prototype object. So the expression jane.ack returns the string hello.